Okay, YouTube, in this video we're going to work on converting from uh, standard, the standard form of a complex number uh, into the trig form for a complex number. So what I want to do is just really briefly review what we mean by the standard and the trig forms for a complex number, starting with the fact that when we talk about a, a number, in standard form, we're talking about some real number plus some imaginary uh, number here, or imaginary part. This is what forms our standard form complex number. In trig form, however, what we are doing is we are simply using these uh, components here, these a and b. And you can see on the left that I'm including this picture of some point a plus bi. So if we were to graph this, it'd be a to the right, say, b up, you know, in general, it could be any direction, but looking at this, we'd say that in trig form, what we're seeking to do is obtain the values for theta and r, where theta is what we call the direction angle here, or we're going to say that theta is the argument. Now, you don't have to know this verbiage, but you may hear it, and they mean the, the, the direction, okay? So theta is the direction, as well as the fact that r is the distance, r is the distance from our number to the origin, distance to origin. And you know what, you might make yourself a little note here, it's always positive, but if we're gonna go from standard form into vertex form, we're saying that we already know A and B, how could we use those defined theta and R? So that's what we're gonna kinda confront here, but uh, back to the, the point at hand here, we say a number that's in trig form gives two pieces of information, R and theta, and we write it this way, we say R cosine theta plus I times the sine of theta. Okay, so, and we can distribute the R, but we tend to leave it out front where we say that this right here, uh, we say that the direction angle is what we have for theta, and we call that the argument. Uh, I could give you a name for R here. That distance, by the way, is the absolute value of this complex number, but I guess you may hear this number here. It's called the modulus also. That's just the distance it is. So we just need to find what is this distance and what is this angle. In terms of the easier of the two to find, if you're asking me, I would say it is this distance right here, R. And the reason why we could say this is because, well, if we know the components of this number, then we know that A squared plus B squared in this right triangle would equal that distance squared. So one thing that we want to acknowledge is give a nod to here is essentially this, we get r is the square root of a squared plus b squared, where these are just the components of this complex number. You can see that we have the horizontal and vertical components. And so we could say using this, we'll find the distance back to the origin. And in terms of this angle, if we knew b and a, and I wanted to find this angle, you know, this is a right triangle. So we could do Sokotoa, and we could say that it's very fair to say that the tangent of, in this picture, the angle theta is equal to y over x, which is in this case our b over our a. I usually use x and y, but we say b over a, and so we could say that theta then is equal to this. We say theta is equal to the tan inverse of b over a, where again, these are just the components of the number. So if you're going to put anything down, basically what you want to know is that these two things are what you will need to write the trig form of your number. You need r and you need theta. You need the modulus and argument or the distance and direction. But once you have those two things using this right here, then we could just, you know, kind of, I guess, have an entry form. So let's go ahead and look at an example where I might want to try this using this little key down here. Don't lose these. Going from standard to trig. So if we had a number, let's just call this number 2 plus 3i, because that's uh, kind of simple to visualize here. If we were to envision 2 plus 3i, that would mean it's two units to the right, three units up from the origin. And this is where our number would exist in the complex number plane. So we say this right here is what we would call the distance. And then we are looking for the angle looking for this. Okay, so if we're writing it in trig form, we just want to know what direction is it heading in and how far away from the origin is it. So once we have this, one thing we do know about this number is that it is 2 plus 3i, but it has a horizontal component of 2, and I would fill it in, and a vertical component of 3. So if you were looking for, say, the distance r here, we would say then it's simply put, you know, just the square root of 3 squared plus 2 squared, which is the square root of 9 plus 4, which is root 13. Uh, I'm totally cool with having uh, an exact value here, but you could get a decimal as well. We will before this video is done. So we say here is our modulus. This is our distance from the origin. And now to find the direction, we're just going to say, well, this reference angle, at least not always a reference angle, but this tangent inverse that we're going to evaluate here would be our y component over our uh, you know, x component here. And we would get some angle, but this thing is only telling us this angle right here. So if I put in you know, 3 divided by 2, which is 1.5, and we do the tan inverse of this, we see that we get about a 56.3 degree angle. And I say visualize this. Does it look like a 56.3? And it actually does, you know, kind of, if you ask me, reasonably look 
my 56.3. So I'm going to box that, and I'm also going to put a thing around this. Uh, we now have what we need to write this number in trig form here. And I'm going to go fill these in, but we say that this distance here was root 13 on our picture. And we're saying that this angle theta is 56.3 degrees, which both look reasonable, by the way. It's just the right triangle. So our trig number, our, our, our complex number in trig form looks like this. We have r, r, cosine theta, plus i, sine theta, and we're just going to fill these things in. Where we have for theta, we have 56.3 degrees. And the same thing is going to be true over here. And this is true any time you write a number in trig form. That's the direction no matter where you put theta. And then we say that the distance here was root 13. So here is my trig number, uh, a complex number in trig form that we started with in standard form. This was this 2 plus 3i. So we say, yeah, that would, that would look like this here. So I just want to mention this here, but we could abbreviate this, and we often do. So instead, we would say, I'm going to bring this over here, we say z. z is equal to, uh, this would be root 13, and we say cis of our direction angle, which is our 56.3 degrees. And we usually write it like this because we always get some cosine i sine, cosine plus i sine arrangement, and this is just a good abbreviation. Okay, so what we're going to do now is this, and I, and I guess I had this complex number up here, and we did a totally different one. If that's okay, I can leave it to you to take a look at this one here, where you have a, an angle that is not in the first quadrant. When you graph this, you go left and up, and you can see that if I had an angle over here, say, you know, here, uh, you would have a bigger direction angle than what you get when you do your tangent inverse. So this last part of this, what I want to do on this one here is actually, I would like to just sketch a picture of this and, and talk about how I would go from uh, trig form back to standard, which is really a, a lot quicker. And the reason why is because all we really have to do is distribute the three through. So I'm going to just say distribute, distribute the modulus modulus and simplify. This is the numerical way uh, <laughs> I can spell here. Simplify. Uh, this is the numerical way to handle this. We also need to sketch a picture of this. So we're going to say sketch a picture. Sketch a picture. So I'm going to start with the picture actually. We should say this is step one, this is step two. But essentially if we were to envision, you know, envision this we would say that really what I'm being told here is a direction and a, and a, you know, like a distance, r and theta. So if I'm heading in a 315 degree direction, we're saying from an initial side that is right here. So we're going to go around 315 degrees, and what we know is 315 kind of splits the difference between 270 there and 360. So we say that this is my 315 degree angle. I'm going to say 315. And then just to emphasize this, I'm going to say that's my direction angle. And I'm going to say, well, I'm going out you know, three units from the origin. So here's the fun part about this. This is our picture. We can draw it however we like. And so I'm going to say three units out from the origin is this far. Just because I said. And so I'm going to actually label this too. I'm going to say three. So now we have our direction uh, and, and our, you know, I say magnitude, but we could drop this down and say what we're really looking for are these x and y components, which in our case of our complex numbers, we call a and b. So if I wanted to know this here, knowing what I do know, we could just say that A, you know, if I wanted to solve for A, B, it would be the cosine of theta here, which we're using the reference angle here. Cosine of theta would be A over 3. And I could work backwards and get, you know, A is 3 cosine theta. But that's the same thing you're going to get when you do this right here and give you your X component. And if you want your Y component, your B here, you would say, well, the sine of this angle is opposite over hypotenuse, so B over 3. And so you get B is 3 sine times your direction or you know angle or your argument here which is 315 degrees so you're getting the same thing here for a and b that you get when you solve it on the triangle down here so drawing a picture is going to help us with one thing it's going to tell us whether this would be positive and this one would be negative which in this case this one is negative and this one is positive so if I'm going to say distribute this, what I really mean is this. We're just going to get our calculators out. Seriously, this is it. And you just type in what you get for 3 cosine 315 and 3 sine 315. So I'm going to put my I in front, and I hope that doesn't bother anybody. I just don't want it to be confused as being the angle at all. So 315, and here goes. Here's the fun part. We're just going to pull this out, put it in degrees, and we say, okay, so 315. I'm going to take the sine of this, or cosine of this value first, and then take that times 3. And so I get 2.12. So I get 2.12 plus, now we'll go ahead and we'll do the same thing, except for this 315, we are going to do the sine of, and take it times 3, and I get negative 2.12, so I get negative 2.12, and I'm going to throw the i at the end here. Now why did I get the same, you know, size 
coefficients for each of these? Well, they were both cosine and sine of 315, which has a 45 degree reference angle. So this is an isosceles triangle. So that makes reasonable sense. And you'll notice that you get a negative value on your second thing here. So if you were to just say be doing this with exact values, which is what we can do, and, and actually I, I will do that here. But basically, uh, you would see that you'd have to correctly assume that this is in the fourth quadrant and sine is negative there. So really quickly here to do this in exact values, we have a 45 degree reference angle. So we would say three times cosine of 315 would be three times root two over two. And this would be a positive cosine value because we're terminating in the fourth quadrant and all students take calculus would indicate that cosine is positive. So our sine value you'll see is going to be negative here, but I'm going to write I times three times the, times the sine of 315, which is root 2 over 2. It's got a 45 degree reference, but sine is negative in the fourth quadrant. So you get this 3 root 2 over 2 plus negative 3 root 2 over 2 i. And this is the same number that you have here in standard form. It's just that this is preferable because you get your calculator to do it, and you get some reasonable numbers when you look at this picture. So that's how you convert from standard to trig and then trig back to standard. Cheers.